Father, we just thank you, Lord, for all of this tithes and offering, oh Lord, uh, the, all our brothers and sisters who gives. Lord, we pray that you bless each and every one of us. And Father, uh, I pray that uh, this money or all of this uh, collection, Father God, will be used mightily for the furtherance of your kingdom. And we know, Lord, that we give this to you and not just to any man, but Lord, we know that your name will be glorified and that we will be utilizing all of this money, Father God, uh, for the glory of your name. So Lord, we thank you and bless them. And as you promise, oh Lord, that you pour out your blessing upon those who give with a cheer cheerful heart. Lord, we thank you and give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I'll ask for the ushers to come. To collect. And while they're collecting, uh, thank you for uh, praise and worship team. I know it's hard to sing when your voices are really, you know, if you have a uh, cough or uh, runny nose, well, praise God. They still were able to, like, you know, give their voices to the Lord. Amen. I know it's hard to sing. You know, it's like you get your breath there and you just, the voice just won't come out. <laughs> Even we have, like, uh, it's hard. We made it through. <laughs> Do you? All right, so for our announcement, today is our uh, as, um, uh, assigned date for a submission of our Project Coin Bank, Piggy Bank, and we need to, uh, for all of you who bring, thank you kids for all of uh, your hard work uh, putting on these coins in the Piggy Bank, and now you have to surrender them and give it, them as an offering to the Lord that we'll be able to use and helping are reaching for um, the senior citizens whom we are doing uh, a program um, on December 23 at 10 o'clock. So it's a Monday. So for those who are you who are available, December 23 is our day for that. Uh, we're going to do a program to a senior citizen. Uh, and if you want to know more details about it, you can contact Pastor Irwin and Sister Lori. And again, December 23, 10 a.m., okay? And um, <clears throat> on uh, December 27, uh, on December 21st, first, you know, we have our uh, Christmas party. All right, it's going to be on Saturday. We'll start at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m., and it's going to be both in the dining and fellowship hall and you know it already uh, and we're just going to remind you again and wait for uh, further announcement with regards to details on that so it's going to be next saturday 2 p.m sec christmas party at the dining and fellowship hall all right so for our kids just a reminder and today we'll be uh okay you, we will pray for that after this so, um, so for the kids, they will have their uh, exchange gift, and that would be a minimum of ten dollars per kids. And for the whole family, also we will have an exchange gift worth of uh, twenty dollars uh, minimum per family. So those who want, who are interested to join, well, everybody, I mean we, suggest everybody joins. So they will have their, um, what do you call this? They will um, pick. Whoever is the one, especially for the, the kids only, but the family, we're going to do it on, uh, on the Christmas party itself, uh, on the day of the Christmas party. Okay? And on the 27th, we're going to have our overnight prayer. It's going to be held at the Lapidario residence. It's going to be from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning. This is our year-end uh, prayer and fasting uh, which will kick off also for uh, January's 21 uh, prayer and fasting, which will start January 1st to January uh, 21st. Okay? Any more announcement that you want to add? No? And again, welcome to <laughs> Damien and Sister Grace. And so we will pray for our Project Coin Bank. Let's lift up those coins. Wow, that's a lot. 
It's heavy. And when I pray for it. Okay, let's pray for the coins. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for all of these coins, Father God, the savings that the children have done. I thank you, Father, and for the parents, O oh Lord, uh, to instill in our hearts, Lord, the, the, the value of sowing and reaping, Father, knowing that uh, not that we ask, Lord, that we expect any return or any blessings for you, but we know, Lord, that you are uh, a loving God and a merciful and kind, and Lord, that we know that uh, as we sow, Father God, all of these things, that even in the heart of the children, oh Lord, that they're willingly, they're giving this, uh, this piggy bank, Lord, whatever they put in there, Father God, that you multiply, that, that Lord, this, this uh, coins, Father God, will, will be a blessing to many people, Father God, that, that they will be rejoicing and glorifying your name uh, because of your goodness. And Lord, we thank you. And Lord, uh, bless those. Lord, who participated in this program. And Lord, we thank you again uh, that you are uh, the one who owns everything. And Lord, we know that uh, as you said in your word, that you will supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. And we give you all the praises in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. All right. So uh, we'll wait for the kids. Okay. All right. So children, you can now uh, lift your... <laughs> Bring your offering in the front. All right. Yeah, one by one. Come on, kids. You can fall in line. You can go ahead. And you can pour it in his one, or you can put it straight in there. All right. All right, the teachers have a lot to, uh, you know, hopefully have some time to count all of this, you know, one cent. Wow, all right. Now the, yeah, the bank will count it. Of course, we're not going <laughs> to let you spend your time. <laughs> all right, thank you, kids. Thank you. All right. Some more, any more? more so for all of you who uh you know we just want to let you know uh this project was uh the, our project for our children's ministry you know that was uh headed by our pastor youth pastor pastor Irwin. so it's way back a few months ago and uh i believe we're gonna still continue on this one you see how you know how how many months only but uh, we already gathered so much right so praise God for all of you kids. And uh, don't worry about, I know some of you might be like, I said, I know this is my coin bank. And like, you know, we're not taking any money from you, but we know that this, you know, that God will bless you more. So whatever uh, you think you, you might have, you know, given, uh, much more will be given back to you. Amen. So we believe in that. And uh, we know that this things that you see in the front, uh, you will see uh, those people who will be recipient of this. Uh, you will witness the joy and, of course, uh, in your heart, you know that you have 
uh, extended God's love to all of those people, especially to those who haven't known, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ yet. Amen. So, uh, good morning, church. Again, uh, we praise and uh, honor our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we are gathered this morning. It's a very special location. Uh, thank you for all the children that gave. I know by faith that you gave coins today. Won't come back to you void. Next time it will be not just coins. But, you know, like check and paper bills. Because I know that God will bless you. And you, you cannot outgive God. Eventually, you'll be professionals, you'll be doctors. You'll, that's what we believe, and that's by faith. Look at the, uh, Dr. James Agtuka. So, uh, eventually, you know, uh, but anyway, thank you again. So, today is a very special day. Yesterday was Pastor Marlon's birthday. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I would like to call on those that are celebrating birthdays this December in the front, please. We'll use our time to minister. All December celebrants, please. Even those that are celebrating anniversaries, wedding anniversary, come in the front, please. All the birthday celebrants. It's all about ministering with God's people. Especially, okay. And Brother Alan, are you ready for... Okay, so Brother Alan has prepared something for all of our birthday cell. Oh, just, just this one. I thought you were going to sing. <laughs> okay, please watch the video. Uh, in the... Oh, it's not a sing-along? Oh, I thought it's a video. So whatever, that's all? Oh, okay, I thought you have a... Okay, but anyway, we have something for you still. I would like to call on all of the leaders in the front place and, 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 and to, do, you know, just, just come, come in the front so we can lay hands on them. Even all the men, all of us together, come here. Come here. <laughs> it's a time to, to uh, you know, I know it's cold. We, we will just join together here, here in the front. You know how special these uh, 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 children of God are. They are very special to us. Look at them. Come on. It's okay. If, if you're okay. So, uh, we just want to extend our love for them. Okay? And don't, don't, don't be shy. Get closer. Get closer. So, ladies, please uh, minister to the ladies, please. And Okay. So, uh, you know, we would like to extend our sincere thank you for what God has done through your life. Um, it's really a blessing that you know, you, you're part of the family here. I know that God has a plan for your life. And thank you for what you do for the Lord. We are witnesses of your kindness. We are witnesses of your integrity. We are all witnesses of the love that you have given to your families, to your spouses, to your children, and to the church. Okay? So let's uh, lift our hands and uh, lay, lay hands on them, please. We'll pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we just want to thank you for our... Uh, uh, a birthday celebrants for Pastor Marlon, Lord, uh, for uh, Star Michi, for Leo, for Joy, for Mommy, Lord God, thank you for everything that you've done in their lives, Lord. And to those that are not here, we just pray that you bless them tremendously, Lord. Thank you for give, giving them to us, Lord. Thank you for their kindness, their, in, their integrity, their tenacity in serving you, the Word of God that's been given to them, Lord God, and their purpose in this world, Father God, in, in, in serving you. We thank you, Lord God, and that we love them so much because you, we know, Lord, that you will continue to pour out so much blessings for them that they don't have enough room to contain it. Thank you, Lord, once again. Thank you for their lives, and we honor and bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank, you, thank you, Pastor Marlon. I thought Brother Alan will sing. Okay. Thank you, kids. You can go to the children's ministry in our church. Or 
So good morning, church. Before we start, let's pray again. Father God, in Jesus' name, we just want to thank you for this time that you have given to us. Continue to cover us with your blood, Lord. We ask that you forgive us from all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And as we continue to study your word, Lord God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to envelop us with your presence. Open up all our senses. Help us to receive from you and understand the things of God that we need to, to uh, apply here in this world, Father God, as we live our purpose for you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So thank you uh, for... Uh, giving me the opportunity here pastor marlon i was like still shaking with my knees <laughs> okay please our topic for today is about uh, don't lose jesus in christmas okay don't lose jesus in christmas and then if you will turn your bibles to Luke chapter 2 i, I just want to go ahead and make it real faster because we have a lot of studies to to do. Luke chapter 2 verses 11, we'll, we'll jump down to verses 40 to 52. Okay. Luke chapter 2 verses 11 down to 40 to 52. Okay. Verse 11, for this, for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And we'll jump down to verses 40 to 52. And the child grew, we know that Jesus grew up, right? Uh, you know, this situation, he was already like 12 years old. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now, so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished and at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Wow, what a question. 12 years old. Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why did you ask me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in, in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Question number one, let me ask you. Is it possible to lose Jesus in Christmas celebration? Yes or no? Yes. Is it possible, let me take away from Christmas, is it possible that when you're talking to your husband or to your wife, your mind is not there, but your body is there. Sometimes the men have select, selective hearing. Can you do something? Can you cook? Can you do this or that? We're there, but our mind is flying. Is there an amen? amen. And the lady said, <laughs> Is it possible that we're in church? Our body is here, but our spirit is not here. Is it possible that we are raising our hands, we are praising God, but our heart, hearts, our heart is away from Him? Right? Okay. So, we become too busy with the season. We know that it's December. In the Philippines and even here in the United States, as soon as it hits the Burmans, 
especially September all the way to December, we are so busy with the season. Sometimes, whether we like it or not, we become so driven by commercialism. We are affected by subliminal seduction from television, media, internet, Facebook, and all kinds of gram, like Instagram, and even sometimes kilogram. Because you keep on looking at the weighing scale. We are engrossed. We are engrossed with the preparation, decoration, buying gifts, putting up Christmas trees, Christmas lights, and decors. We have more time to search the internet rather than reading our Bible. Why are you so quiet? We look for what's on sale starting Black Friday to Cyber Monday. We are preoccupied with Christmas parties, Christmas activities, Christmas vacation, holidays, and yet we tend to forget the real meaning of Christmas. We forget about Jesus. Like, just like Mary and Joseph, according to what we've read, they lost Jesus in the midst of religious festivity. They are their earthly, earthly parents. The feast, that, that religious festivity is called the Feast of the Passover. He is the Passover lamb. Jesus is the Passover lamb. And yet, they lost him. They don't have Christmas celebration during that time. And in our generation right now, we too can possibly lose Jesus in the midst of religious festivity like Christmas. In your handouts, there's three possible reasons why people, including Christians, can lose Christmas, can lose Jesus in Christmas. More than likely, there's probably a thousand reasons why people or a person, including Christians, can lose Jesus. But this morning, I'm only giving you three. I think three is more than enough, right? So, number one reason why Christians tend to forget Jesus on Christmas. Number one reason, we are focused on tradition rather than the truth. Again, I'm going to say it again. We are focused on tradition rather than the truth. Okay? Let me ask you, what is Christmas? What is Christmas? Are we celebrating something that we don't even know the real meaning? Or are we just going with the flow? Because everybody is celebrating. Let's compare tradition and truth. Okay? Tradition says that Christmas is an annual festival commemorating the birth of Jesus Christ. It's observed primarily on December 25th as a religious and cultural celebration among billions of people around the world. Although the month and, and date of Jesus' birth are unknown, the tradition of celebrating December 25th as Christ's birthday came to the Romans from Persia. I'm just going to give you a quick history of the history of Christmas. So, it's, it originated... Okay, Christ's birthday came to the Romans from Persia. Mithra, the Persian god of light and sacred contracts, was born out of Iraq on December 25th. Rome was famous for its flirtation and strange gods and cults. And in the 3rd century, remember 3rd century, I mean during the time there's no Christmas celebration. Jesus was here and they don't even celebrate his birthday. They don't even recognize him. Right? So during the 3rd century, the unchristian emperor Aurelian established the festival of Dies Invicti Solis or the day of the invisible sun, S-U-N, on December 25th. Mithra was an embodiment of the sun, S-U-N, not S-O-N. So this period of its rebirth was a major day in Mithraism, which had become Rome's latest religion. Rome, during the time, was a superpower nation. It's an empire. Okay, you can look at your, your uh, uh, encyclopedia. It was a, 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 a superpower nation, which I believe, in my humble opinion, even up to this day, is still just number two after Israel. Because nobody beats Israel. 
It is believed that Constantine adhered to Mithraism up to the time of his conversion to Christianity. He was probably instrumental in seeing that the major feast of his old religion was carried over to his new faith from Mithraism to Christianity. Okay? So that's the tradition, why we celebrate it. Now, let's go to the truth. The truth says that the name Christ, which means Messiah or Savior, was mentioned 555 times in the Scripture, primarily in the New Testament. Now we're in the Scripture, whether Old Testament or New Testament, can you find the word Christmas? Okay? I don't want to be legalistic, but this is what the truth says. Okay? In Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says, Therefore, just as though one man sinned, entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. And that's the truth. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23, I know the youth memorized this. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's what the truth. The truth also says in John chapter 3 verse 16 that for God so loved the world that he gave his, his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I'm going to add one more verse or two, uh, two more verses. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. Verses 1 to 2. Because we don't just want to conform with the tradition. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, because we want to conform with the truth. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, I beseech, beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable, reasonable service. And please take note of verse 2. And do not be conformed to, the path, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is, what is that is good, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We just don't go with the tradition. It's okay. I mean, yes, we like gifts. We like greetings. We like all these decors and everything. We love the Christmas season. I'm, I'm also a person who loves it. But the thing is, do we really understand what the meaning of what we do? Do we really understand the meaning of what we do? Let, there, there, there's a story in John chapter 4, verses 1 to 26. If you turn your Bibles there, that's why I told you I have a lot of Bible verses here. John chapter 4, verses 1 to 26. Please say amen when you're, you're there. Only one said amen. Pastor Marlon is the only one there. No, thank you. I'm not even there yet too. Okay, let's read the story. Verse, chapter, one, uh, chapter 4, verses 1 to 26 says, Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard, did I say? No. Nope. Okay. Therefore, when the Lord knew uh, that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria, so he came to a city of Samaria, which is Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Verse 6, Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is, is that to you? Being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. 
Verse 10, Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is it who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to her, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself? As well as his sons and his livestock, Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband. For you have five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband, in that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when, when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming now. And now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Verse 24, God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When He, when he comes, He will tell us all things. Jesus said to her in verse 26, I who speak to you am He. I would say that based on what we've read, there's about six traditions and six truths that we're going to compare that were mentioned in their discussion or conversation. Let's go down to verse 9. Okay? Verse 9. Verse 9, the tradition says that Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. That's their tradition. Why? Because they are Gentiles. I was wondering how the Samaritan woman recognized Jesus as a Jew. Jesus came to the well and she recognized him as a Jew. How did she perceive that Jesus is a Jew? Is it because of his looks or is it because of his accent? I'm a Jew. How are you doing today? So we don't even know, right? But she perceived that she is, I mean, he is a Jew. Now, I don't really know how she perceived it, but the truth is, Jesus did. He went with the Samaritan. He broke that barrier between the Samaritan and the Jew. Tradition versus the truth. Okay? Verse 10. Tradition says regular drink, water, regular water. Not even a diet water or <laughs> diet water. It's just a regular water. But the truth says living water. Right? He is the living water. Down to verse 12. Tradition says, are you greater than our father Jacob? That's what the tradition is. That's what her mentality is. Are you greater than our father Jacob? But the truth is, Jesus is greater than Jacob. Right? Verse 16. Tradition says to lie. Jesus told the truth. Listen to their discussion. He said, remember, she said, I don't have a husband. But Jesus said, you have five husbands. You had five husbands. And the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you truly spoke. Tradition says to lie, Jesus told the truth. Okay? In verse 20, tradition says, Our father worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. That's the tradition says. 
But the truth says, Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Truth versus tradition. Verse 25, tradition says to the woman, I know that the Messiah is coming who is called Christ. That's her perception. That's her mentality. That's the, the, the tradition that was brought to her that she learned upon. The truth says, man, if you're not, you're, you're, you're not go having goosebumps when Jesus said that, the truth says, Jesus said to her, I who, I who speak to you am he. That's the truth. Okay? Another tradition is in John chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. We're not going to go there. I'm just going to tell you. You can do it as a reading uh, project at your home. A man healed at the pool of, at, of Bethesda. Tradition says that a man of in infirmity for 38 years, going to say it again, 38 years was going back and forth to the pool because he wants to be healed. He was giving so many excuses about not being healed. I was too late. I cannot go with all those people who go in front of me and I don't get healed. So for 38 years, the tradition says he kept on going back and forth, going back and forth, going back and forth, and he did not get healed. But when he met Jesus, who is the truth, Jesus said, rise up, take up your bed, and walk. What did not happen in 38 years happened instantly that time when he met Jesus because he is the truth. Tradition says you cannot be healed because you cannot go in front of other people. But the truth says Jesus heals. Are you getting something? Let me ask you a question. As for you, what is the real message of Christmas telling you? Are you going by the traditions that you just know ever since you were born? Or are you going with the truth? The truth shall set us free. We are so entangled by all these things that, you know, we've learned. But the Bible is the one that it's the ultimate truth. It's telling us. Another reason for why people lose uh, uh, Jesus in Christmas, number two, is distraction versus devotion. Many people that are distracted with, with Christmas and less people are devoted. Many people are already dis so distracted and they don't want to be distracted. I'm too busy. I d don't bother me. They want everything instant so they can have more time with their cell phones. Google, chit-chatting and surfing the internet. They don't want to be bothered or interrupted on what they are doing. That's why nowadays we can see all kinds of text messages that are so abbreviated like LOL. I don't even know what that is. TY. Thank you. Now, hello is, is laugh out loud. T-T-Y-L. You know that? Talk to you later. R-O-F-L. I don't even know what that is. I-D-K. I-D-K. Can we just talk on like abbreviations? I-D-K, R-O-F-L. We don't get, you know, things like that anymore. We're learning the, the lingo of the generation this time. How about GB? GB is like, God bless. Oh, GB. Come on. They, we even cut Christ of Christmas. They just put X. Xmas. They just put X-Men. 
Xbox, I, Express. They also created, you know, because they're so busy, they also created the emojis that are really, really super abbreviated like the praying hands. Worshipping hands. Clapping hands. Instead of calling to pray for somebody, they just text, prayer sent. If we are not careful, it will slowly replace the real sincerity of the message of Christmas, of the message that we convey to people. Instead of calling them, how are you doing? We just said, true. We don't convey the real message anymore on how we feel about that person. There's no feeling. Or like this, approve. So we are focused on festivities rather than fellowship. We lose our purpose. How many Christmas parties did you already have attended since December 1st? We love to be entertained with games, music, and food. We love entertainment. We have so many reasons for self-entitlement. It's like I, I work so hard and I deserve to buy a, a nice tennis racket. A nice shoes. I work so hard and I deserve to have a big screen TV, an 85 inches TV. And I want it OLED or QLED. I don't want the, the DVD or whatever. I want the OLED. After a hard day's work, I deserve to eat a lot and sleep long. And for some, some of our students, they will probably say, I studied a lot, I worked so hard on my projects, and now I, I deserve to play video games or watch Netflix all day. And no one can bother me. The modern-day mentality of so many people nowadays, including some Christians, are quite very opposite from the lives of the early Christian church in the scriptures where their focus is not for themselves anymore, but for others. They are willing to give everything they can. They sold their properties. They gave all their possessions. They are willing to sacrifice for others. They are willing to die for the sake of the gospel and respond to the call of God in their lives. Men, let's go to Acts chapter 2, verses 40 to 47. Acts 2, 40 to 47. Acts chapter 2, verses 40 to 47, it says, And with, with, with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, He, he saved from this perverse generation, be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they sold their possessions. They sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Look at the comparison on how people live nowadays if we are not careful. And those that we, we've known and what the scripture says. Let me ask you. Oh. Many people are focused on receiving rather than giving. In Luke chapter 10 verses 38 to 42. Mary and Martha. Let's go there. Luke chapter 10 verses 38 to 42. Luke 10, 38 to 42 says, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary 
who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard His word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached Him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? You're asking God. You're asking Jesus. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Why can't you tell your sister, help me? Why do you have to tell Jesus to help your sister? And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. Let me ask you a question. As for you, what is the real message of Christmas telling you? Are you going by, are you so distracted? Or are you devoted to Christ? Number three reason. Many people are focused on material gifts rather than the giver of gifts. The source of everything. The maker of the heavens and the earth. The alpha and the omega. The beginning and the end. The God of all gods and king of all kings. The recent savior. The Emmanuel. God is with us. The omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent God. There is no one like him. And we are so preoccupied with gifts. When we are supposed to be preoccupied with the giver of gifts. James chapter 1 verses 16 to 17 says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good and, per and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Proverbs 10 22 says, The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And sometimes, you know, it's like people, they, you know, it's like, oh, I did not get a Christmas gift from my husband. You're not going to get your gift either. <laughs> our children are like, sometimes, you know, I mean, our children are all good, right? Amen. But some children are like, I want this. I want to buy this. I need this. Buy me a PlayStation. Buy me a video game. Buy me this. I want to go there. I want to eat there. Okay? Let me go to a different perspective, okay? At this point in your life, let's talk about another thing. At this point in your life, do you still believe in Santa? Raise your hand if you believe in Santa. At this point in your life, that if you or your loved ones or your kids still believe in Santa Claus, Please be, don't, don't be deceived. Yeah, we see him every time, all the Christmas season, right? So let me give you a quick background of Santa. Santa is a legendary or a mythical figure, probably was taken from the original concept of St. Nicholas of Myra, also known as Nicholas of Barry was an early Christian bishop of the ancient Greek maritime city of Myra in Asia Minor during the time of the Roman Empire. Because of the many miracles attributed to his intercession, he is also known as Nicholas the Wonder Worker. No wonder worker. No wonder he is called Santa. Because he is called the Wonder Worker. But, but please take a look at this church. Are you ready for this? Santa might be called the wonder worker. But the God whom we worship is a God of wonders. Gonna say it again. Santa might be called a wonder worker. 
but the God whom we worship is a God of wonders. He is the way maker. He is the miracle worker. He is the promise keeper. He is light in the darkness. He is the great physician. He is a wind talker. He is a water walker. He is a storm stopper. He is a dead riser. He has no equal. And no one can compare with him. Not even Santa. Is that the reason why we are so in Christ? That's why when I was preparing this message, I was like, Lord, what is it that we are so still so preoccupied with Santa? You know, we don't, we are still fascinated on how he looks. But look at the real message and what you've done for us. Don't let Santa take away your focus out of God. Look at what he has done for us. For the sake of illustration, because I don't want to compare Santa with Jesus, because Jesus don't have equal, right? But for the sake of illustration and not comparison, I will give you some information about Jesus and Santa. You ready for this? Say amen, especially the young people if you're ready. We're going we're gonna to see the illustration between Santa and Jesus, okay? Number one. Santa came with some gifts because he cannot carry everything, right? You see his big sack? If you watch that movie, uh, is that the Polar Express or something? He has so big, but it's still not enough to give all gifts to all the children. Right? I'm just giving you like a legendary Im or imagination, right? So Santa came with some gifts. Jesus came. He is the real gift. Right? Santa came with some gifts. Jesus came. He is the real gift. Number two, Santa gave gifts under the tree. So he came to, you know, he sneaks in your house. And they said he puts the, the gift under the tree. That's what we thought when we were little. But Jesus gave him, but Jesus, so again, Santa gave gifts under the tree. Jesus gave gift himself hanging on the tree. See the difference? Santa gave gifts under the tree. Jesus gave himself hanging on the tree for you and me. We can make a song on that, right? Santa came, give gifts under the tree. Jesus came, gave himself, hanging on the tree for you and me. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Number three reason, or number three, Santa's gift is limited. Jesus' gift is unlimited. Who wants to eat with only rice? Right? I want more rice. This one is, Santa's gift is limited, but Jesus' gift is unlimited. Let's move on. Santa came riding Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. We even sing that song. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. So he came riding Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. Jesus came riding a lowly donkey. Not even a stallion. It's like, you know, that lowly donkey. Santa came to bring toy. Who's excited? Santa came to bring toys. Yeah, Santa is coming. He's bringing toys. Jesus came to bring joy. 
you know, because Santa came, just give gifts or toy, and then after that, they play, and that's it. They are not, you know, they are not happy anymore. I want more toy. And for the boys with the toys, I want bigger toys. But Jesus came to bring joy. Santa comes once a year. Jesus comes. Jesus, Jesus is with all of us all the time. He dwells with us. He's among us. He's with us. He's the Emmanuel, God with, with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Just imagine you only see Santa once a year, especially this season. Jesus is always with us. Okay? Santa came wearing red hat, red clothes, and adored by many. Okay, let, let, let's... let's I forgot something. I don't want to be insensitive, right? But for the sake of illustration, Santa came, you know, to symbolize prosperity. Santa came with white beard. I don't know if it's the right word to say, but big fat belly to symbolize prosperity. Did you see Santa skinny? I'm going to bring my gifts. You don't portray Santa like that. Right? Even in movies. So he came to symbolize property with, you know, that, that, that's how he looks. But Jesus came. He's so thirsty and hungry for you and me. He's so thirsty and hungry for you and me. Santa came wearing red hat, red clothes, and adorned by many. Jesus came wearing the crown of thorns. His face unrecognized, his body flagged, beaten, covered with crimson red blood. Santa symbolizes that red hat, clothes, or something. But Jesus, look at his body. In Isaiah 53, 1 to 5 says, Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he, he shall grow up before him a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, it's the, the scripture says, And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. You know, when you see Santa, everybody's like, oh, Santa, let's take a picture. You know, the tradition every year, they bring their kids, look at uh, uh, the malls. They bring their, their little kids, their children, their babies, they post with Santa, right? And take a picture. And they're like, oh, so cute. So you're taking picture with Santa. But the scripture says, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we desire him. He is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from Him. He was despised and did not esteem Him. Surely He, was, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed Him. Is stricken, is smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was buried for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. That's why, some, you know, like, Lord, looking at, you know, I mean, Tradition, it's really looking nice to take pictures with all this Santa's hat, with all the costumes that... But my heart cries when I, I was preparing this. I was like, Lord, you came wearing that crown of thorns for us to replace that hat 
just to give us the real message of Christmas. So it will look cute on the picture. We don't understand the real meaning of Christmas. You came with that, with that cross for us. And we replaced you with all these things that you came to save us. You came to love us. You came with a purpose for us. And even if you're the only person in the world, Christ will still come and save you and die for you. Is that the real meaning of Christmas that we like? All the festivities and, and miss the real meaning of what Jesus did on, for us? Another one. Santa came not even close with Jesus because we cannot compare Jesus and Santa. Santa came bowing at the feet of Jesus. Santa came bowing at the feet of Jesus because he said he also needed a Savior like Jesus. Jesus don't bow to anybody. Jesus came for you and me. Jesus doesn't need a Savior because He's the real Savior. In conclusion, Jesus came for you and me. Don't lose Jesus in Christmas. Keep Christ in Christmas. Let's continue to uphold the truth. Because the truth shall set us free. Let us continue to be devoted and not distracted. Let us continue to seek, serve, and worship the giver of gifts. Let us celebrate the King of Kings. Jesus is the reason for the season. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him and do the cross, despising the shame and set down at the right hand, of the throne of God. What is the real meaning of Christmas to you? Don't get loose. Don't let don't lose Jesus on Christmas. With every eyes closed and bow, our, our heads bowed, I would like you to stand up, please. Father God, we just want to thank you for the message of the true message of Christmas, Lord God. More than elaborate gifts, more than the giving of gifts, more than the glamorous, glitterous, if that's the right word, gifts that you have given to us, Lord. But the most important gift is you, Lord, for us. You came in a manger. Thank you, Lord God, for giving your son, Jesus Christ, to us so that we will continue to understand the real purpose, the real message of why you came on the, to us, Lord. Thank you for dying for us on the cross, Lord. Thank you for your blood that we have the forgiveness of all our sins. Thank you that we have the reconciliation to the Father because of you, Lord. And if you are thinking of something else other than you this Christmas, Lord God, forgive us, Lord. If our focus is not on you, Lord, if we are so distracted, if we are so preoccupied with all the things, Lord God, that take even take your place, Lord forgive us and help us lord god to use this opportunity for all the people especially don't who don't know you who are celebrating christmas because of tradition and not the truth help us lord god to become vessels lord god or instruments so that people will know who you are especially for all our loved ones lord 
thank you for allowing us, Lord, to even have that relationship with you, Lord, calling you our Abba Father. Thank you, Lord God, for coming and saving us. Thank you for giving your Son, Jesus, to all of us, Lord. Thank you for what you've done on the cross. Thank you for even giving us an everlasting life. We love you, Lord, and we honor you. Thank you, Jesus. And as we continue to depart from this place, Lord, we pray that you bless each and every one of us, Father God, and let the real celebration of Christmas be upon our hearts, Lord. Protect us, Lord, throughout this week. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for the favor. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for all the blessings. Keep us safe, Lord God. As we celebrate the Christmas season. Once again, we thank you and we honor you and love you. And bring back to you all the highest praises, glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering once again. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. And keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you all. Thank you. In Jesus' name.